How do you test that your web application will do what it's supposed to do? Ideally, you're writing unit tests, but that's just for code and logic. What about clicking buttons, submitting forms, and seeing certain page elements when logged in? Many of us will do this manually, going through some kind of script to ensure everything works. But there's a better way with a tool called Playwright. Playwright is a test automation framework that assumes the role of a user testing your application. It can click buttons, fill out forms, and interrogate DOM elements to see what their value is. It does this by using actual browser engines under the hood, including Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox, right out of the box. Oh, but there's so much more. Let's set up a quick test so you can see how it works. I have already installed the VS Code extension for Playwright, so I can open the test panel and scroll down to the Tools section and click on the Record New button, which will use Playwright's code generator to generate a test for us. This generates a new test file with a test block as well as opens up a browser window for us to interact with. Let's navigate to the URL we want to test, which in our case is our demo to-do app. Let's add some to-dos just like how a user would use your app. Now, if we go back over to VS Code, we can see that everything we are doing in the browser window is being generated in our test file. Inside our test block, we have a series of commands that Playwright has generated for us. A page fixture is passed into the test so we have access to the web page. We start with the page.goto command, which navigates to the URL we want to test. Next, Playwright uses the page.getByPlaceholder command to find an element on the page that has a placeholder text. The placeholder attribute in HTML is used to provide a short hint that describes the expected value of an input field. In our to-do app, the hint is what needs to be done. We then use the fill command to fill the input field with the text feed the dog. Finally, we use the press command to simulate pressing the enter key. This is great, but we are not actually testing anything. We are just automating the process of adding to-dos. Let's add some assertions to our test to make sure that to-dos are actually being added to the list. We can also generate assertions. Let's go back to our browser window and click on the icon with the letters A, B which is for asserting text content. We then click on our first to-do, and now we have a box that says, assert that element contains text. This is editable, so we could change it if we wanted. Let's click on the green check mark to add the assertion to our test file. And let's do the same for the second to-do. We need to make sure we click on the assertion icon again, otherwise Playwright will think we just want to interact with the page. But let's take a moment to look at the code that was just generated. Notice page.locator body? A locator is how Playwright finds or locates HTML elements on the page. We normally use our eyes to find elements, but Playwright and also screen readers or assistive technologies use the web page's underlying code to locate an element. Here, body refers to the HTML body element. There are many ways to locate an element on the page, including HTML attributes, CSS classes, etc. This locator is very generic, and our test would fail if this text was found somewhere else on the body of the page. In Playwright, we encourage you to use role-based locators. A role is the accessible role of the element that is used by assistive technologies. For example, a button has a role of button. Our list of to-dos has a role of list item. This is a much better way to locate elements on the page. But don't worry if you are not sure of the accessible roles for each element. Instead of having to inspect the DOM to see the accessible names, Playwright and Copilot can help us with this. Let's open the Copilot chat in line in the editor and ask it to use get by role instead of body. This looks great. Let's accept the changes and run the test. Oops. Our test fails. Strict mode violation for get by role list item. Playwright found five items for this role. Our two to-dos and the all active and completed buttons. If we highlight the list item in our code and go to our browser window, we can see the five elements being highlighted. The role list item is too generic. We need to be more specific with our locator. Let's see if Copilot can help us with this. OK, Copilot. Fix strict mode violation. Let's see what it does. Oh, nice. Look at this. 
It's telling us the problem is that to contain text expects a single element, but get by role list item returns multiple. And to fix this, we need to select specific list items. And the suggestion is to use the nth method to get the first and second list items on the page. Let's accept this and run our test again. And it passes. Great. But let's ask Copilot to change this to a list item that contains the text of both to dos. That looks better. And look at these dots under await. Why are they there? Oh, await has no effect on the type of expression. Quick fix? Yes, please. Remove unnecessary await. Nice. OK, let's run our test. And it passes. However, this test is not so good. To contain text is not strict. We can instead use to have text, which will only pass if the element has the exact text we are looking for. Let's use that instead and run our test. And look, it fails. As I have the trace viewer option selected when I run my test, I can open a trace of the test and see what is happening. The list item expected only the to dos, but Playwright found list items with the all active and completed texts. Our to do list items all contain a toggle to check and uncheck the to dos. We can filter our list to only show the list items that has this toggle. We can use the pick locator button to help us find the locator we want. Then back in VS Code, we can add the filter method, passing in the locator for this toggle. Let's run our test, and now our test passes. And just to be sure, let's break it. Nice. Now we can be sure our test is working as it should. How else can we improve this test? We are using the same placeholder element various times, which is very repetitive. OK, Copilot, create a reusable locator. This looks great, much cleaner, and Copilot is much faster than me at refactoring that simple task. The name of our test is not so good. Let's change it to something more descriptive. This time, let's open the Copilot chat. Copilot is powered by AI, so mistakes are possible. Review output carefully before use. OK, Copilot, create a better name for this test, because let's face it, naming is hard. That looks great. Let's click on the Apply in Editor button to apply these changes to our code. Look how we get a nice highlight showing what was changed, and we can even click on Show Changes and see the diff. Very cool. Let's accept. Let's add some comments to our test to make it more readable for the next person to work on this code. Wow, Copilot is super fast and those comments are really helpful. Let's apply those changes to our code. Now let's see if Copilot can help us write more tests. We can give Copilot some more files for reference by opening the todoitem.tsx file and adding the file to the chat. We can do the same for the app.tsx file. Now we can ask Copilot to write a test for us. Copilot, create another test that marks a to-do as complete. OK, look how it is using the tree files as reference, the two we gave it, and our test file. And look what it gave us. This looks great. Let's apply it to our code and run our test. And it fails. Copilot won't always get it right. But it's still much faster to refactor things than to create things from scratch. Let's see if we can fix this. The element it is trying to find is a list item with the name of feed the dog. Let's use the trace viewer to help us debug. We can pop the DOM snapshot out into a separate window and inspect the code. The class of completed is there on the list item, but if we check the accessibility tree, it does not have a name. It does, however, have a checkbox of toggle to do. We already did this in our first test, where we used the filter method to only show the list items that has the toggle. Let's do the same here. And now our test passes. Great. Let's ask Copilot Chat to write another test that tests the all active and completed filters. It really is incredibly fast. But like an AI, Copilot can get things wrong. Sometimes it will use outdated code from previous versions of Playwright. Let's tell it to use get by role instead of text equals. And just like that, it gives us an updated test using get by role, which it's getting from the types 
inside the Playwright core package in the node modules. Nice. And now we have get by role, link with the name of active. This is so much better. Let's ask it to also change the CSS locator. Again, let's guide Copilot to give us what we want. Use get by role instead of CSS locators. Look how fast it gives us the updated result for our tests. The code looks great. Only one way to find out if it works. Let's copy it and paste it under the last test and let's remove this import as we already have it at the top of our file. Looking quickly at the code, I can see this test is going to fail as the list item is going to return five items just like before. Let's copy our filter by toggle to do from the previous test. And now our test should pass. Let's check it out. And it doesn't. Damn. List item received five again, but we already refactored that. But look at line 72. For some reason, Copilot is reassigning the items locator. And we don't need to do this as nothing has changed. We can just remove it. And we can also remove the one on line 77. Let's run our test again. And oh no, it fails again. Ugh. What's happening now? Let's debug using the trace viewer. Let's walk through each step of our test. And look, here Playwright is clicking on the first to do, feed the dog. Over in our code, see how on line 61 it says mark the second to do as complete? It's using the nth of one, which is equal to the second checkbox. As we only want to get the checkboxes from our to dos, we can use the filter method again to only get the checkboxes from our to dos. And now our test passes. Great and minimal work from us. Next, let's ask Copilot to add a before each hook for us so that we don't have so much duplication in our tests. OK, this looks good, but we're still creating the to do's in each test. OK, Copilot, move the creation of to do's to the before each hook. And look at that. It refactored all our tests to use the before each hook looks much nicer. Let's apply it in our editor, accept the changes. Let's run all our tests and oh no, they fail. We already manually fixed this error, but let's see if Copilot can fix it for us. This time, let's add a selection of code to the chat. Look how it shows line 27 to 35 of our current file. Okay, Copilot, let's see if you can do this. Use filtering to get the checkbox from the first to do. And did it do it, did it do it, did it do it? Yes, it did. That looks good to me. Let's apply an editor and view the changes. Oh, look, it's actually gone ahead and added the filter method to the next test too. Let's have a look at the diff. Looks great. Let's accept the changes and run our test. And it passes. Great. Let's run the next one. Seen that we also made changes to it. Oh, that's unfortunate. It failed. Received six, expected three. It's our list item again. We know how to fix this, but let's see if Copilot knows. Let's open the chat and tell it to use filtering to only show list items that have the toggle. And perfect. It's added the filter for the list item. Let's apply our code block and accept the changes. Let's run our test and it passes. We can now remove the other reassigning of the items locator from line 49 and 55, and then we are good to go. Let's run all our tests one more time and happy days, they all pass. You see how easy it is to let Copilot help you improve your tests? It's like having a pair programmer with you. You need to guide it, but if you give it the right prompts, it really can help you get things done quicker. And for me, I would much rather refactor then write all that from scratch. Now you have no excuses to not write end-to-end -end tests. So off you go to test like a pro with Playwright and GitHub Copilot.